Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. Cook Inlet Tug and Barge is a marine transportation company specializing in harbor services with a primary marketing focus on the Port of Anchorage. Providing their customers with quality-based service specifically tailored to their needs. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for today's show. Uh, several warnings out. We've got a high wind warning out here for the central and eastern Alaska range for winds to come up tonight, later tonight and tomorrow. Uh, gusts to 70 miles an hour, especially mostly west of the Tote Cutoff here, and that also includes the Denali Park and Healy areas. And then uh, the Tanana Flats, the wind advisory out for gusts to 50 miles an hour tonight and tomorrow. Up on the eastern Arctic coast, a blizzard warning out for winds gusting to 50 miles per hour, and that'll create zero visibilities or reduced visibilities and whiteout conditions. That out tonight through tomorrow. A winter storm warning out for the Ambler and the Kobuk Valley areas tonight. One to three inches gusty winds, 45 miles per hour there, uh, reducing visibilities. And then the blizzard warning out here for the Bering Strait Coast and St. Lawrence Island, that's uh, due to expire here early this evening seeing the blizzard conditions today, but that's going to improve here later on this evening and should end. Winter weather advisories here for the central Beaufort Sea coast and the western Arctic coast for gusty winds and visibilities reduced to a half a mile at times, snow and blowing snow in those areas. And then winter weather advisories here, the Seward Peninsula back through Galena down the uh, river valley there to uh, Grayling. And that's for two to four inches of snow and areas of freezing rain that's out uh, for tonight and tomorrow. And Anchorage, a high wind warning out for Turnigan Arm actually in higher elevations, East Anchorage, say from Potter's Marsh up to uh, Palmer. And that for winds 30 to 40 miles an hour coming up uh, tonight and continuing into early tomorrow, but mostly overnight tonight. Uh, could see gusts over 85 miles an hour at times. And then the Manuska Valley under a fire weather watch uh, for those strong winds and little if any precipitation. So after all that, moving on to the yesterday satellite imagery, low pressure here over the northern Bering Sea, moving northward there and then the front extending from the southeast into the interior and an old front that brought the snow across south central Alaska late Sunday night, late Saturday night and early yesterday morning. Still breaking up as it shifted over to the Copper River Basin. Pretty good day down across the southeast coast and not too bad areas to the north. Uh, winds coming up today along the Arctic coast are back to that east-northeast 30 to 40 mile per hour speed. As you can see on today's map, this low back through here continuing to drop or no longer moving north, but now trying to come back to the southeast. Developing a uh, wave here on the frontal boundary, which is still to the west of Cook Inlet, that's going to ride northward. And the low center expected to track across western Cook Inlet or along the Alaska Range uh, later tonight, early tomorrow. And that's when the strongest winds will probably occur in the downsloping areas of the Chugach Mountains and through Turnigan Arm. Strongest winds on the west side of Turnigan Arm and lesser winds to the east. But uh, a lot of rain here today from Kodiak actually spreading in southwest Kodiak Island, and then the south to north flow bringing rain into uh, Seward, rain and snow, or snow change to rain and snow this afternoon in Valdez. Rain, uh, pretty good rainfall over at Cordova to Yakutat, all the way as far east as Elfin Cove, but some sunshine down here over the southern pan and let temperatures rise into the uh, mid 50s. And putting this in motion again, you can see the uh, upper trough here is going to take a turn to the north very shortly and right up the frontal boundary there with uh, ridging here over the Gulf of Alaska, 
bringing the nicer weather into the southeast coast. And then another front, you just see the clouds, the leading edge of some clouds in the next system will be pushing eastward quite rapidly into the Aleutians. Uh, for today, here's that low south of St. Lawrence Island and the front, something like this earlier this morning. And we'll see tonight that forecast that low center cuts off and moves to about this position. So that's when the strongest winds here will occur uh, across south central Alaska. And then the uh, snow and blowing snow conditions up over the northwest interior again from the Kobuk Valley back across the Seward Peninsula areas in the mid, uh, mid and lower Koyukuk Valley areas. And then coming back around brisk northwest winds there across the Pribilofs, bringing snow showers all the way back down to the Alaska Peninsula and eastern Aleutians. And here's that uh, next system, the front driving eastward into the western Aleutians uh, tonight with uh, more rain and snow out in that area. <clears throat> High pressure holding most of the moisture off, just be a few variable clouds in over the southern southeast coast. And that warm front keeping the rain, good steady rain in along the north Gulf Coast. But again, <clears throat> not getting too far, almost getting over there toward Juneau, but not quite making it. And then for tomorrow, uh, that front edges eastward, the low comes northward and weakens, so winds will be diminishing throughout the day and becoming more southwesterly, south and southwesterly here from Kodiak Island up into south central Alaska. But the uh, winter weather advisory is still out there for the Seward Peninsula and the winter storm warning probably for the Kobuk Valley until that front lifts northward. Otherwise, with the snow and blowing snow, look for IFR along just about all of the Arctic coast there. You can see uh, quite a few isobars, so gale warnings out for the entire Arctic coast tomorrow. Uh, lesser extent here toward Kotzebue Sound where they saw the winds of Kotzebue gusting 35 miles an hour this afternoon. Should see less wind tomorrow, but those northwesterlies uh, coming a little bit in closer to the coast now and a little bit weaker, but still driving some snow shower activity in, across uh, the Alaska Peninsula and then on a good west, westerly jet, that uh, frontal system moving into the central Aleutians. And we'll see on Wednesday, that continues to drive eastward pretty rapidly, bringing rain to the Alaska Peninsula and Bristol Bay. Mixture precipitation up over the Kuskokwim Delta areas and to a lesser extent the Yukon Delta. Scattered rain and snow showers through the central interior. Areas of light snow from the Koyukuk Valley up to the Brooks Range and probably some flurries back through this area. Then areas of snow and blowing snow continuing, but lightening up a little bit there for the eastern Arctic coast, uh, coming down to brisk wind advisory levels, but still some gales out for the western areas there. And then this front bringing rain and snow that's draped across the Aleutian chain. And this frontal boundary now just about north-south or north northwest to south-southeast, still not getting much precipitation, if any, into the southern panhandle. Most of the rain will be over the northern areas, Port Alexander up to Sitka on up uh, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, and then rain changing to showers for the Yakutat area. And temperatures today down across the southeast coast, mid 40s to mid 50s. 45 at Juneau, contrast that with 55 in the Stewart Hyder area, 52 at Cloak, that same reading at Wrangell, 46 at Sitka, 46 also at Skagway. Yakutat saw 43. 34 with uh, rain and snow this afternoon at Valdez, 41 in Cordova with rain, 39 up at Gulcana, winds are gusting up to 40 miles an hour along the Copper River uh, during the afternoon hours and probably will continue to increase even more tonight. And again, those winds will increase along the Alaska Range, Northway 41. Same thing there at Fairbanks with Delta 44 degrees, 37 at Talkeetna, a little chillier, 21 at Fort Yukon but the uh, warmest they've been the last couple of days. And 10 degrees at Arctic Village with 10 at Anatuvik. On the Arctic coast, temperatures below zero on the west side to near or a little above there for the central and eastern coast. And then uh, warming into the 30s here as you come down the yukon Kuskokwim River Valley areas all the way out to the Delta. It's about the same in the lower to mid 30s. 32 snow and gusty east winds today in Nome. And then the blizzard conditions from Tin City down across St. Lawrence Island while Tuxuk Bay came in with 32 degrees today, 33 at St. Paul, 35 at St. George, mid to upper 30s here for the Aleutians. In the Alaska Peninsula, near 40 degrees here. And then uh, Bristol Bay, mostly in the lower 40s, but uh, Togiak and Dillingham. Dillingham actually at 37 degrees, Togiak at 34. And the lows for tonight, uh, below zero for the North Slope and the Arctic Coast in that uh, 5 to 15 degree below zero range. Otherwise, uh, near zero through the 
Alaska or through the Brooks Range there and then much milder in the 20s to lower 30s down to the south. South central Alaska with mild southerly flow, 35 to 40 for the lows tonight, about the same for the panhandle. A little cooler down with less clouds in the southern areas, but the northern and coastal areas uh, near 40 for the lows and near 30 or a little above here for the Alaska Peninsula, 28 for St. Paul, mid 30s for the Aleutians. Highs tomorrow uh, nudging above zero most areas. There are some locations of the North Slope and Eastern Arctic Coast uh, may stay below zero, a shade or two. And then upper 30s to mid 50s there in the Tanana Valley with those southeast winds kicking in. Delta over to Healy again, even into the Fairbanks area, rising into the lower to possibly mid 50s. Cooler 30s back out toward the coast to upper 20s right along the coastline there in Nunavak Island. Highs in the 40s for the Aleutians, <coughs> excuse me and mid to upper 40s for the panhandle. And for flying weather, look for a lot of IFR here for the eastern Gulf Coast in across portions of uh, the panhandle from Elfin Cove, staying across Haines on up to the white, on up to the passes. Another big area of IFR here from Kotzebue Sound, the Seward Peninsula again where those winter weather advisories are out, extending back down toward Kutsukwim Bay. And then look for uh, IFR anywhere along the Arctic coast tomorrow due to the snow and blowing snow and those gusty east winds. And then another batch of IFR sliding eastward there with that incoming system. And that will continue to push eastward uh, right into Wednesday and come eventually into Bristol Bay. And for passes, Anatovic, VFR, but the southern approach could become marginal at times tomorrow. And Adigan, VFR, possibly becoming marginal. Again, that would be on the southern entrance. North side should stay pretty good. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR for those passes of the Western Alaska Range. Same forecast also for rainy, marginal VFR. For windy, marginal conditions at times, both north and south. Isabel may see some marginal VFR. Uh, again, both passes or both entrances. And for Mentasta, south entrance most vulnerable to seeing any marginal conditions there, but I think basically it'll stay uh, VFR far enough to the east and for Tanita again eastern entrance possibly marginal otherwise open and for Portage look for marginal VFR and Chilkoot and White IFR in the forecast freezing levels here good southerly flow pulling two to four thousand feet up right across the Copper River Basin and into the Tanana Valley and then uh, that's where we're seeing the warmer temperatures tomorrow into the mid 50s for the highs in that area and then back the surface right through this area late tonight and early tomorrow morning to push a cold air southward. And then that next system nudging some warmer conditions up into the far western Aleutians in the two to 6,000 foot uh, varieties. And icing with that uh, system coming eastward, pushing eastward here, uh, starting out over the western Aleutians late tonight and tomorrow, reaching about this location on uh, tomorrow afternoon. And then also below 14,000 feet where I'm icing possible right up to the North Gulf Coast, all of the southeast interior, then a swath up the west side there to the western Brooks Range. And winds aloft, uh, high pressure right through this area here. So good southerly flow up to 70 knots, supporting those surface winds and also uh, pulling that warmer air northward with it. And then back around to the north, right down across the uh, Panhandle or just to the east there at 45 knots. And then a good strong 140 knot jet pushing that next frontal system and storminess into the Aleutians. 3,000 or 9,000 feet southeasterly is 55 knots here across south central Alaska in the central Alaska range with 40 to 50 knot winds for the eastern Gulf of Alaska and then much lighter here as you get over toward the southern southeast coastal areas. And those winds 40 to 50 knots out of the east and southeast there along the Arctic coast, much the same at 3,000 feet, a little more easterly but still 40 to 45 knots there, up to 30 knots across the Kobuk Valley, Koyukuk Valley into the Kobuk Valley, taking a turn around to the northwest here on the southern side or the southwest portion of that low center at this uh, elevation there, right up uh, not too far from McGrath, but westerly is 25 to 35 knots, south to north winds, 35 to 40 knots here just off the coast at an advance of the front, and northwesterly is 25 to 30, and then some stronger westerlies here Again, that pushing that frontal boundary eastward. Turbulence, uh, look for severe below 5,000 feet here, anywhere in the uh, reddish or orange shaded area from the North Gulf Coast into the Gulf of Alaska, right up over much of the southeast interior. That'll include the Chugach Mountains, Talkeetnas, all the way over to the Wrangells, and then mechanical moderate chop here, Lake Iliamna, 
Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutians, and that same sort of pattern going on up along the Arctic coast as well. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Good evening, I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of Alaska Public Media and the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, welcome to Hangar Flying. Our guest this evening is Greg Miller. Uh, Greg was on uh, last time, and we started talking about the Iditarod and the Iditarod Air Force. Greg's a very experienced pilot, and he's flown, I think this is his seventh Iditarod, and we were talking about some of the, the procedures that have been developed over the years to make that, uh, that whole mission safer. So, Greg, welcome back. Thank you. Let's pick it up where we left off. I think you were talking about a couple of things that interested me, and uh, one of them was estimating visibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, easier said than done. The uh, whiteout conditions during winter in Alaska is always an issue. It's easy to figure out winds, it's easy to figure out low ceilings, it's easy to figure out your weight and balance, but that uh, the poor visibility up there is difficult. And we do it in at least a couple of ways. Um, the, uh, the most valuable are PIREPs. And with the Iditarod Air Force, I think we're, we're uh, benefited by the fact that there's many of us up there flying the same route, the same mission, um, within minutes of each other. Um, and so, and we're all talking. We're all talking on the Iditarod frequency or 1229 or whatever it might be, giving pirates back and forth. We also have somebody where we're going on the ground as well as where we're coming from, the dispatcher, of course, and we try to uh, get those reports from people on the ground at the other end where we're going. That's always a little tricky. It's best to have a pilot at the other end giving you a weather report rather than somebody who's not used to flying conditions. They'll look outside and say it looks good to me when maybe it doesn't meet VFR standards. Um, but at any rate, those PIREPs are absolutely incredibly valuable and I must say I don't understand why pilots in Alaska, um, myself included, during normal flights through whatever pass, don't give PIREPs regularly. It's pretty easy. Just punch the button. And if you don't know the form, the controller, flight, uh, flight service, whatever, will always walk you through what they want to know. Um, another thing we do for estimating visibility is um, <clears throat> really pre-race, and that is in the weeks, months beforehand, now when we're all up there flying. Um, test yourself a little bit when you're flying um, ask yourself, oh, that river up there, how far away do you think it is now in good weather? Um, oh, I think it's four miles away. Then look at your GPS, which might have the wand feature and can tell you just how far it really is. Look at your map, whatever it is, and I bet you'll surprise yourself that's really only <coughs> two miles or two and a half miles. And why is it relevant? Because when you start thinking in terms of, well, you need three miles visibility or whatever, it, whatever visibility you're searching for, you need to be able to reasonably accurately estimate what it is. Um, it doesn't do pilots any good to be overly optimistic about their, their estimates. Um, I, I, you know, I couldn't agree more. In fact, um, we were talking earlier about PIREPs. And I mean, it's, it's amazing when you look at a map and it shows the PIREPs in the entire state, there may be two. <laughs> and, and I think you hit on a good point. I think some people probably are reluctant to give PIREPs because they're concerned that, well, there's a form and you're supposed to do this. this. It doesn't matter. It, they don't ask your name? No. They, they don't, don't care about anything except what kind of plane are you flying, what altitude, and what are you finding out there? Yeah. And, uh, and the, you know, the folks you're talking to, the controlling agency or the flight service or whoever, are more than happy to get those PIREPs and they'll help you with, with the right format. But sure. um, I want to get you back on. We've we got about a minute left, um, but I'm going to get you back on to talk about a great and interesting flight from Hawaii. Any other thoughts on the Iditarod? Well, um, 
you, you, you can't practice enough, you can't prepare enough, no matter what you take for safety gear, preheating gear, you take lots of electrical cords, you blow out a fuse over there, you're dead in the water. You, you know, take a backup and then a backup, whatever it might be. Take clothes and then extra clothes, take, you know, whatever. You can always offload it at wherever you're going and not carry it every flight. But survival up here means something, and you only have to be on the on the back side of that power curve once yeah. to realize how, how important pre-planning is. Well, I, and uh, the conditions you guys had this year were pretty, pretty brutal as far as temperatures. We say that about every year. It's always something. It might be visibility. It might be weather, whatever right. it is. It's the outdoors in Alaska, uh, yeah. summer, winter. It's unique flying. You don't appreciate how unique it is until you go to the lower 48 and you think, Oh, it is different in Alaska. What an adventure. Let's up the ante here a little bit with our game. Yeah. Judge, thanks for being on. Let's uh, get you back next time. We're going to talk about a really interesting flight from Hawaii. Okay. Ladies thanks. and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight and uh, Greg Miller's presentation and discussion. And tune in next time. We're going to uh, have a program I think you really enjoy as well. Until then, fly safe. Welcome back. We'll look for south to southeast winds here. The coastal areas in these zones on the outer edge of the more significant wind field, so 25 to 30 knots. Inside waters, uh, Stevens Passage up uh, toward Frederick Sound, southeasterlies 20 knots, and uh, actually Clarence Strait up in toward Frederick Sound there, and then Lynn Canal Glacier Bay southerlies at 25. And then on Wednesday, uh, still looking at small craft advisories here, southeast in the forecast at 30 knots for the south and central coast, taking a turn to the west at 30 knots there for the uh, north central coast, and then lighter southwesterlies at 15 for the far north, and then 20 to 30 knot wind, strongest down here over the southern inside waters, southeast 20 for the central areas, Lynn Canal and Glacier Bay south at about 20, with seas running four to six feet, of course, the higher seas down there to the south. And then for the South Central Alaska areas, Prince William Sound uh, gales out for tonight and into tomorrow. Same thing for the North Gulf Coast, south 40 knots. And these winds all trending down tomorrow afternoon. So it'll go southwesterlies, 25 knots for the waters around Kodiak Island, more southerly there for the Western Gulf Coast. Look for south winds, 30 knots for Northern Cook Inlet coming down in the afternoon, southwest 25 coming down in the afternoon there, south of the Forelands for the Southern Inlet. And then for Wednesday, much lighter winds, southerlies 10 to 15 for Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound, southeast at 15, and the North Gulf Coast looking at southerlies roughly at about 15 knots, southwest 20 here for the Barren Islands in toward Augustine Island. 25 knots southwesterlies, seas uh, five, maybe seven feet uh, with those winds, and southwest 25 with eight foot seas there on the east side of Kodiak. And for Bristol Bay, southwest, 25 knots. Westerly gales here for the Alaska Peninsula. Seas 15 to 18 feet. And west winds at 30 knots with 12-foot seas there for the water southwest of Kodiak Island. And then that takes more of a southwesterly turn. Sitkanak over to, uh, say, Sand Point, southwest 25 with 10-foot seas. But gales still going here, southwest 35 knots with 15-foot seas, a little lighter. Uh, winds, but not a whole lot there on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Bristol Bay, south of 20, with seas running at about six feet. Out in the Aleutians, uh, gales scattered around out over the western areas, west 35 knots, dropping back to 25 knots. And then here in the north zone there, north of Adak and Atka, southwesterlies at 35, and then some west northwest 35 knot winds for the Fox Islands with seas running 16 to 19 feet. And then for uh, Wednesday, looks like uh, more gales, in fact, gales out here for the uh, western areas, all of the western zones there into the central zones, 35 to 40 knots, take more of a turn southwesterlies, strongest on the Bering Sea side of uh, the Bering Sea zones, Bering Sea zones here, southwest 45 knots on the Pacific side, southwest 40 knots, a little bit of a change there. And for uh, south of Nunavak Island, northwest 25, northwest 20, extending back up towards St. Lawrence Island. Pretty light winds for the northern Bering Sea tomorrow, uh, 10 knots, and westerlies at 25 with 11-foot seas for the Perbolofs. And the outlook for Wednesday, 
Uh, back to the gales, west, 40 knots, 20 foot seas for St. Paul and St. George Island, southwesterly sweeping in toward Cuscoquam Bay, but only at about 25 knots in those seas, forecast at 8 feet. And then northerlies at 25 here for the northern Bering Sea, northeasterlies 20 knots from Nunavak Island right up across St. Lawrence Islands. And for the Arctic coast, uh, for the eastern and central Beaufort Sea coastline, look for gales right out of the east tomorrow. 30 knots on the central coast and then back into the gales here for the western Arctic coast all the way down to the Cape Lisbon Point Hope areas and then from Wales to Cape Thompson north to east at 25. Those will swing around and diminish as uh, looks like a weak low will try to develop right in this area. So southwest 15 there from uh, Wales to Cape Thompson. Northeast 35 knots for the western Arctic coast. No change there for the central coast. East 30 tomorrow and on Wednesday. And then uh, gale force winds here for the central Beaufort Sea coast and then dropping back down a little bit there to 30 knots on the eastern side to demarcation point. And for tonight again, uh, the blizzard warning should end here shortly for the St. Lawrence Island area and the Bering Strait coast, but there is a winter storm warning out for the Kobuk Valley due to this front and the snow and blowing snow. And winter weather advisories also, Seward Peninsula back into the east, anywhere from one to four inches of snow, snow and blowing snow. Blizzard warning tonight there for the eastern Chukchi Sea, or for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And then the high wind warning out as this low moves northward, look for some strong winds, possibly gusting as high as 85 miles an hour for the higher elevations of uh, East Anchorage, Upper Hillside, Bear Valley, Turning an Arm and those locations tonight into early tomorrow. Then as the low moves in and weakens and the front pushes eastward and weakens, uh, winds coming down, chance of rain, northern pan and all chance of sun over the southern areas. And that next storm plowing eastward to about this position on Wednesday with the low center not too far from the Kerbaloff Islands. Let's look at the weather. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.